Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 17th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. This tutorial will still work on our main menu and we'll add in our little fading and camera sequence when we click to go down to our menu. We'll add some more buttons and we'll add some sound effects for when we click our start game button. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you could help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So if you've played Timmy Mousy, I know I've said it a few times in the past couple of tutorials, you'll know that when you start the game you can click and the camera will pan down to the main menu. Well that's what we're going to do here. Now, in order to get this just right, I want to create um, some a couple of different items. So first, we'll start with some text that kind of bounces up and down to say "click to start." So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI and let's go to text. And I'm just going to have this as "click to start," and naturally, the text is going to say "click to start." Let's anchor this to the top middle. And let's increase the size of the text a bit more, make it much larger than what it is. Uh, so let's have this as 60. Uh, let's have it bold and obviously change the size of the box it is contained in. And don't worry if it looks plain and boring, you know, we'll deal with fonts when we need to. Um, what we will do though is change where it is located so let's place it more towards the top and the center so it will look a little bit like that and while we're at it let's actually make our button a bit more centered there we go so now i want to kind of animate this just a little bit um you know it, it doesn't matter how you animate it but one cool thing that you can do is you could work with rotation and scale to you know do different things like for example you could make it do that with a Z or Z axis, or you could work with the X and kind of rotate it. So I think I'm gonna do the uh, rotation on the X just to kind of give it that, that weird kind of odd look, but you'll see what it does in the animation. So let's go to uh, the animations folder. Let's go to animation and click on create. And I'm gonna put this as, oops, let me change my capitalization. We'll put it as click bounce and let's start the animation. So press record. The first keyframe is going to be on the X, so we'll make, set that as one, set it back to zero. Uh, after 60 frames, uh, I want it to be, um, let's say, more than 25 actually, let's have it as 50. And by the uh, 120th frame, I want it back as zero. Uh, by frame 180, let's have it as minus, 50 and by frame 240 let's have it back as zero so it kind of loops so this animation is going to be kept as looping and let's press play and just see how that looks now it should give it a kind of a little effect uh, on screen there we go so it's kind of like a bouncing effect so we'll keep that as it is now the idea of what we're going to do is we are going to hide our start button but it means that other things are going to be unhidden at the same time so what we need to do is on canvas we now need to create an empty game object and we'll call this menu static and i'm going to drag and drop the start game button into menu static at the same time i now need to make sure that this fade out screen is indeed at the bottom of the hierarchy so we just need to reorder the hierarchy and bring fade out down to the bottom next let's turn off menu static like so so our button disappears next thing we need to do is we need to have a giant encompassing button all over our menu and we can do that by going to game object let's go to ui and let's go to button uh, if I can find it. And now we want to stretch this button across the entire screen. Go to text and just delete whatever text it says. And then let's zero out everything on the button. Next, we need to go to normal color and turn off the alpha. And go to highlighter color and turn off the alpha. So it's zero down here. 
Uh, pressed color, we need to turn off the alpha. In fact, let's turn off the alpha on everything just to be safe. The idea is that there is a button here that you will never physically see, but you can indeed press. So how is this going to work exactly? Well, a couple of things we now need to do. We now need to look at our camera and create an animation. But what I am going to say is let's take this camera as it is now, the main camera, hold control and press D. This one, the second one, we'll have this as anim cam. And I'm actually going to zoom in on this one and just bring it up a little bit. So let's use our move tool and just bring it up to round about there. Now the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to animate this camera and we're going to make it zoom down to match the inline with the main camera. So we're going to take, uh, in fact, let's make this real simple. Let's set this as one. Let's have the anim cam set as 10. So we're going to move it from, in fact, we'll have it from nine, move it from nine to one. So that is going to be the animation that we'll do now. So let's go to uh, animation and let's press create and we'll put anim menu cam and let's press record and let's set that keyframe on the Y. So let's set zero and then let's type nine. And I want it to zoom down over the course of, um, let's say one and a half seconds. So let's set that as frame 90 and then set that to one. Press record again, head back to project and the actual animation is there and we want to untick loop time. We now need to go to the controller for this animation and make sure that we create a new state. So anim cam right here, go to the controller and right click on the grid, create state, uh, so, sorry, create state, empty, and right click on it and then set as default state. That means that our anim cam will stay at the top whenever we turn main camera off. So let's turn main camera off. Let's head back to the scene and let's press play. And what we should see is the anim cam at the top, not doing anything, but with our text bouncing. And we can theoretically click this button. We just can't see that we're clicking it. Next, let's create the script that allows us to bring that camera down in line with our actual main menu area. And we can do that inside the main menu control script and we'll go into it from here. So in order to do this, we need to create a new uh, method and a new coroutine. So let's start by saying public void um, menu begin button open close bracket open curly bracket and obviously we will need to create a coroutine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the line to say start coroutine and in brackets I'm going to type a name of a coroutine that we haven't written yet uh, and we'll put anim cam open close bracket close bracket and semicolon that now means that we have to create the anim cam coroutine. So let's do that. Let's go below I enumerator start button and type I enumerator anim cam open close bracket open curly bracket. And first thing we'll need to do is go down a line and we'll say yield return. Oops, if I can spell return right return new wait for seconds and it was 90 frames which is 1.5 seconds so we'll put 1.5 f close bracket semicolon next thing we're going to need to do is declare a couple of variables so the variables that we need to declare is the big button itself that we're about to press the text that is kind of uh, bouncing and the last thing we'll actually need to declare is that variable that contains all of our buttons well at the moment it contains just our start button, but it will contain other buttons as we go further along. So down here where we have serialize field, let's add in some more variables. Serialize field, game object, and this one will be bounce text and semicolon at the end of it. Serialize field, and this will also be a game object, and this will be I'll just put it big button. Uh, next will be the camera. So serialize field, 
This one will be a game object as well and will be anim cam because we need to turn that off at the end. Uh, next, serialize field. There's more variables than I thought there would be, but that's okay. Game object and this one will be um, main camera. So main cam. And finally, serialize field, game object, and it will be our menu controls. So we'll just put it as menu controls. So this is where all our buttons come into play. So this sequence of events we need to plan carefully now. We need to involve all of the actual um, variables that we've written, but we need to put them all in the right order down here. So what happens when we click the button? Well, first, we want the animcam to start playing its animation. So animcam dot get component and in spiky brackets animator open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes the name of the animation that we wrote. So let's go back to Unity and let's copy the um, name of the animation, which is that one. Place it in there. Quote, close bracket, semicolon. So we're going to play the animation. At the same time, we need to turn off um, bounce text and big button. So bounce text dot set active is false with a semicolon and big button dot set active is also false. So now that's animating, it's playing, it's coming down. So it'll play that animation. And then after 90 frames, so 1.5 seconds, we then need to turn anim cam off, main cam on, and menu controls on. So main cam dot set active, true, semicolon, anim cam dot set active, false, and then menu controls dot set active, true. And as always, this, this script will be in the pinned comment. You can go down there, click the link, and you'll be able to download this for free, just in case you have any problems. So at this point, we've now got our sequence of events in place. The only thing missing from this is our start button with a sound effect. So let's get that sound effect in now, and then we can test everything together and make sure it all works. So let's go back to Unity for now. Let's go to Audio. Let's go to Effects. And I'm going to drag and drop this button select audio, which again is in the pinned comment. Go and download it. Just make sure you unzip before you try playing. And let's go main menu controls. Right click, create empty. And we'll call this button select. And then drag and drop button select audio onto it and untick play on awake. It now means we have to declare that as a variable as well. So let's go to our script back to the top and serialize field once again audio source button select so now what we do now as we have this in place we need to put this inside the coroutine for the start button and we want it to be the pretty much the very first thing that would happen because we want the audio feedback to occur as the fade out is on screen and doing its thing so just before fade out we can say button select dot play and remember capitalization i've said it multiple times in multiple videos it is important so let's quickly double check what's going on with this script now all variables are declared the start game button will work it'll just have the extra play sound uh, but this anim cam means that whenever we press our big button we should animate down to our main menu and the buttons should appear so let's save our script and then let's head back into Unity, give it a moment just to compile, and then we'll add all of our variables in on our main menu controls object. Uh, we've got a few to add. So we've got bounce text, which is um, click to start. Uh, the big button, which is just labeled button. Anim cam, which is that one there. Main cam, which is that one. Menu controls, uh, which is menu static and button select, which is, uh, oh, it's right there. Of course, we just added that one in. So everything should hopefully work as intended at this point. I'm going to save my project just in case. And let's press play. Keep our fingers crossed that everything we've done should all come together nicely now. So our bounce text works as fine. 
So let's click. Oh, I've done it again. I've not even set the button up. What use is it having a button if you don't set it up? Please, please scream in the comments. Uh, so yeah, obviously we want the button to be set up. So button, click on it, drag and drop main menu controls, click no function, click main menu control. And, uh, oh gosh, what one was it? I've actually forgotten what one we wrote. Uh, menu, begin button, that's it. Now let's try. So you'll be able to see here that the button, although we can't see it, is still physically clickable. So click, pan down, and there we go. So let's try that again. You may need to change things, you know, as and when, make things more in line, make things appear whenever you want, make things fade. It's entirely, entirely up to you. So one thing I did notice there is they're not quite aligned, are they? Something does seem a bit strange. Um, because the anim cam seems to set itself as minus 5.57. So what we'll do is we will ensure that both of these cameras are set up absolutely correctly. So let's set main camera to be minus 5.57 and we should avoid any kind of unnecessary jerky jolting within the camera system now. So let's click it, pan down, there it is, start game and it works. Now, one thing you'll notice is in doing all of this, going back to the main menu, we'll end up having to do the same thing again, which can be quite annoying. So that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. We're going to make it so that segment only happens whenever you start the game for the first time. So it's going to be a little bit of passing code around between scripts to kind of understand that if we've already started the game, we don't need to do that little sequence to begin with. Uh, so remember to subscribe and click the notification bell. Stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, and I'll see you next time.